Hello, it's John Heaton, and today I'm going to take you through a few goodies I picked up on my recent travels. So, I was in the US to begin with, I was in Houston, Texas, and then I was later in Brighton in the UK. Uh, the first thing I picked up was in Wimbledon, UK, WH Smith, this new Beatles vinyl Bible, which is a very good picture on the cover. I'm not even sure if I'd seen that before, them holding some of their albums up. It has detailed reviews of every album and also um, how to buy it in a particular um, version, you know, mono, stereo, what's rare, what's not rare. Um, highlights of the early career, highlights of the later career, particularly seen from a kind of vinyl perspective rather than uh, sort of rather than a greatest hits perspective. And then quite interestingly at the end they have a top 20 Beatles solo albums. And this was quite refreshing because it included uh, four albums from Ringo Starr, uh, 20 Sentimental Journeys, 19 Time Takes Time. And uh, Goodnight Vienna is also in there. And uh, quite interesting, obviously, one disagrees or agrees with some of it, and uh, plus to go in a band ending up at number one. So it's, I really recommend this for anyone who collects vinyl, anyone's a Beatles fan. It's a little bit sloppily edited. For example, Goodnight Vienna is credited to 1973 here instead of four. And uh, rather embarrassingly on the Sergeant Pepper, uh, I think it's on the Sergeant Pepper, one of them has got the record sticking out and it's got a David Bowie record sticking out instead of a Beatles record so that's a little bit embarrassing but I can't find the example of that now and I'm looking for it or oh, maybe it's on Abbey Road actually yeah it's on Abbey Road if you look here that's not the Apple and I can see it's a Bowie an early Bowie uh, no it's tonight the Bowie record from the 80s, so God knows. Anyway, so a little bit of a minor complaint there, but on the whole, brilliant read. Thank you for that. Um, I looked for the, if there was any new Ultimate re ultimate Music record guides out. There's one on the Smiths, which I didn't buy. Um, I think there's, I can't remember, a couple, of, they're coming out thick and fast, so just a matter of time before the other favorites of ours will be released, I suppose. I think they, they're producing about one a month from what I can tell. Uh, what else did I pick up in Houston? I just want to mention that the record shops I went to, um, Black Dog Records, both of them on West 19th Street uh, in the Heights district of Houston. Uh, Black Dog Records run, run by a very knowledgeable guy. Um, and then on the same street, uh, Vinyl Edge Records. Uh, both of those very worthwhile a lot better stock than your average UK record shop, or certainly better than the average Hungary record shop. Very, very pleasing to uh, be able to, as I always do when I go to a new town or to visit a, a place which I haven't been for, to before or been to for a while, I always check out the vinyl record stores. Um, I picked up this one on vinyl, which I hadn't got. Do a separate review on that at some stage. I was delighted to pick up this Band on the Run picture disc, sealed from 1978. Uh, something tells me I'll be keeping that sealed. I was just impressed in general with Black Dog Records, how many sealed copies they had, considering you know, these records came out 40 odd years ago. Um, you'd have think that they'd, they'd have been open, but uh, a few of them remained sealed. And uh, so that, that was good. And then I picked up a couple of albums, which I'd been kind of meaning to look into, like Todd Rundgren, Something Anything, uh, which I've been listening to, trying to get into, The Vapors, <coughs> excuse me, with Tony Japanese, the famous single. Uh, so that was good and not, not expensive. I hadn't got a proper version of this from Elton with the, uh, the inner sleeve and the lyrics. Uh, for some reason, my, my copy didn't have that. So I, I like this album and I'll be doing a separate review of that at some stage. Nick Lowe, uh, Jesus of Cool, although I think in America 
it was had to be renamed because they banned that name. So maybe this is a UK copy. Anyway, uh, that's his album from 1978 with uh, I Love the Sound of Breaking Glass on it. And then this is his follow-up, Labour of Lust, with Cruel to be Kind. Again, no, none of those were expensive. I saw a copy of this bad boy, which I do have. But I have the UK label. And this in the US, it was on the portrait. I think in the UK, it was on Polydor label. In here, on the US, it's on the portrait label. So very happy to have the, the alternative label and the alternative back cover as well. And the hype sticker on the front, although it says contains songs from the hit television special Ringo, I don't think it was a hit. <laughs> So that was a little bit uh, taking a bit of a liberty there, but uh, good to have another, and that wasn't too expensive either. And then moving on to those last lot were from Vinyl Edge, and I did a bit of a stupid thing. I, I was coming from Black Dog Records with my Black Dog Records bag of records, and I got into Vinyl Edge. They said, do you want me to look after your records while you're shopping? I said, yeah, okay. And then I promptly, promptly bought a few records and left the original bag behind. Uh, and I got back to the UK, got back to Hungary and found out I'm missing a few albums and I realised that my second trip to, to Black Dog, my purchases from that second trip on the Sunday were missing. So they've kindly shipped it to my uh, colleagues in Houston and they're going to get it to me somehow. So they're not lost, which is the good news. So there's more goodies, even more goodies than I've just showed you to, to, um, that I'm going to be showing you later, I suppose. And then in, in the UK, in Brighton, um, shop called Vinyl Revolution, very impressive little record shop. Um, the Record Store Day edition of uh, High Tide and Green Grass uh, on green vinyl. Very nice. Always been a favourite. As you know, as you probably know, I don't much like compilations, but this one is is a good one and a very succinct summation of their 60s work and the, and the booklet is in perfect condition. Uh, so yeah, very nice to have that spanking new. And then, even more impressively, because that, that I knew that, I didn't know that was out, but it's not a great surprise to see that that was released in Record Store Day. Uh, picked up this which is their second 60s compilation, Through the Past Darkly. Now, I had this on an 80s reissue, uh, which didn't have the hexagonal design here. And the back cover I'd never seen before, because it's certainly not the back cover on mine. It's in pretty good condition. Um, this was the back cover on mine, that picture. Tribute to Brian Jones here. And the record is slipped inside here. And uh, it's in pretty, pretty good, pretty good condition. Uh, it wasn't too cheap this one, but I, I, considering I'd never seen this original hexagonal, maybe you guys in the US it's quite common, but uh, certainly in the UK I, I, I'd never seen, seen this before, so I was very happy to uh, have this. And obviously it's a, it's another decent compilation because a lot of the songs on here were not on albums like Honky Tonk Woman and Jumping Jack Flash in particular, um, let's spend the night together. So good to have those. Um, so I'm going to be doing a separate review of a couple of those albums, but I just wanted to show you and basically, and oh, well, there's another album I don't have to show you, but I picked up a very good copy of Bad Fingers Straight Up in a, cop in a record shop called The Record Album in Brighton. Uh, and it was easily the best, almost mint condition, uh, copy of that album. So I had to pick it up and I asked how come it was in such good condition. And the, the owner of the record shop said it came from a very good home. I think he kept it in a fridge-like room, which sounds a bit sinister, but I'm, I'm grateful to the guy who kept it in a fridge-like room because to get a near mint copy of Straight Up uh, is just a, a joy. Uh, um, because my copy is a bit uh, bit knackered, as you probably saw in my review if you watched it. So thank you for watching. See you next time.